Good afternoon. This would be our lecture for this afternoon, Introduction to Biostatistics. Outline of this lecture would be the origin and development of biostatistics, definition of statistics and biostatistics, reasons to know about biostatistics, types of data, and graphical representation of data. So statistics is the science which deals with collection, classification, and tabulation of numerical facts as the basis for explanation, description, and comparison of phenomenon. The origin and development of statistics in medical research would be as follows. So in 1929, a huge paper on application of statistics was published in a physiology journal by Dunn. In 1937, 15 articles on statistical methods by Austin Bradford Hill were published in book form. In 1948, a randomized controlled trial of streptomycin for pulmonary tuberculosis was published in which Bradford Hill has a key influence. Then the growth of statistics in medicine from 1952 was at an eightfold increase by 1982. So this would be the picture of the fathers of biostatistics. So statistics arising out of biological sciences, particularly from the fields of medicine and public health, would be biostatistics. The methods used in dealing with statistics in the fields of medicine biology, and public health for planning, conducting, and analyzing data which arise in investigations of these branches. So there are reasons to know about biostatistics because medicine is becoming increasingly quantitative. The planning, conduct, and interpretation of much of medical research are becoming increasingly reliant on the statistical methodology. Statistics pervades the medical literature. So example of penicillin, penicillin and chloramphenicol in treating bacterial pneumonia in children less than two years old. We need statistics, biostatistics at that to answer the following questions. So what's the sample size needed to demonstrate the significance of one group against the other. Is treatment A better than B or vice versa? If yes, how significantly so? What's the normal variation in clinical measurement if it's mild, moderate, and severe? How reliable is it and how valid is the measurement? What's the magnitude and effect of laboratory and technical error? And how does one interpret abnormal values? In clinical medicine, we use it in documentation of medical history of diseases, planning and conduct of clinical studies, evaluating the merits of different procedures, and providing methods for definition of normal and abnormal. In preventive medicine, especially in the realm of public health, biostatistics is used to provide the magnitude of any health problem in the community, to find out basic math factors underlying the ill health, to evaluate the health programs which was introduced in the community, whether it be a success or a failure, and to introduce and promote health legislation. So what do statistics cover? It covers from the planning, design, data collection, data processing, data analysis, presentation, interpretation, up to publication of your data. A biostatistician can help in the design of study, sample size and power calculations, selection of sample and controls, designing a questionnaire, data management, choice of descriptive statistics and graphs, application of univariate and multivariate statistical analysis techniques. 
So in investigation, we start with data collection. Then we are able to present data in tabular diagram and graph form. Then descriptive statistics would be measurements of location, variability, dispersion. Inferential statistics could be done through hypothesis testing and point estimates or using of univariate and multivariate analysis. We have different types of data, namely qualitative and discrete quantitative and continuous quantitative. Qualitative data could be further subdivided into nomina, for example, sex, exam result, blood group, color of eyes, which would, could be categorized as follows. On the other hand, ordinal has ranking. So it has your response to treatment, which could be poor, fair, or good, severity of disease, mild, moderate, or severe, or income status, low, middle, or high. If it's quantitative, it could be quantitative discrete or quantitative continuous. So quantitative discrete would be all whole numbers. So the number of family members, number of heartbeats, number of admissions in a day. If it's quantitative, it's continuous using decimal points, such as how we measure height and weight, age, blood pressure, serum cholesterol, and BMI. So discrete data, there are gaps between possible values. So whole numbers, there would be gaps between the following. If it's continuous data, theoretically, there are no gaps between possible values, such as number of children or how you measure hemoglobin. Continuous data, on the other hand, could be transformed into discrete data. So weight in kilograms is continuous. Discrete could be, trans could be underweight, normal, and overweight, such that height could also be transformed to short, medium, and tall, depending on how you want to present your data. So this is an example of a table of data. So this is a table which shows distribution of blunt injured patients according to hospital length of state. So first column would be your hospital length, number of patients and percentage of patients as follows. So your scales of measurement as mentioned, qualitative could be nominal or classificatory or ordinal would be a ranking scale. Quantitative variable is discrete or continuous and could be an interval scale. So data is placed in meaningful intervals and order. So the unit of measurement would be arbitrary. So temperature, 37 to 36, 38 to 37. So intervals should be equal. So no implication that the ratio, for example, 30 degrees Celsius would not be as twice as hot as your 15 degrees centigrade. Ratio scale, data is presented in frequency distribution and logical order. A meaningful ratio often exists. So if example, age rate, height, pulse rate, pulse rate is 120, is twice as fast as 60. So person with weight of 80 kilograms is twice as heavy as the one with 40 kilograms. So this is if it's ratio. So remember the difference between interval and ratio. So in summary, scales of measure would be the following. Nominal would be the qualitative classification of equal value. Gender, race, color, city. Ordinal would be the qualitative classification, which can be rank ordered, such as your socioeconomic status of families. And interval would be the numerical or quantitative data, which can be rank ordered and sizes compared, such as temperature. And ratio 
is a quantitative interval data along with ratio such as time and age. We also have the concept of frequency distribution. So this would be data distribution, which would depend on pattern of variability. So uh, in our later lectures, we will see center of a distribution. So this would be the averages, mean, mode, median, ranges, and your shapes under the curve. So we could have either simple frequency distribution or group frequency distributions. So for example, if we are to tabulate the hemoglobin values of 30 adult male patients listed below, so steps for making a table, you find the minimum. If we go back, the lowest value is 9.1 and the highest value is 15.7. So calculate the difference. We will know in, the, in our later lectures that this would be the range. That would be 6.6. .6. And decide the number and width of the classes. So remember that your interval should always be equal so that you could prepare your dummy table. So your dummy table could be the following. And then you mark the number of occurrence for each interval. So it has been done for you on the table on the right-hand side, such that when we make the table frequency distribution of the 30 adult male patients, it would be the following. And frequency distribution, if we are to separate it by gender, would be the following as well. So in a table, it's important to look at the elements. So ideally, a table should have the number, title, column headings, and footnotes. The number, table number for identification in a report. Title, place, time, and period describes the body of the table. Variables, what, how it was classified, where, and when. Column heading should be there variable name, number, percentages, etc., and footnotes to describe some columns, row and heading, special cells, and source. So you would see that this table would have the title, column headings, footnotes, making the table complete. Other ways that we could use biostatistics would be making diagrams or graphs. So usually in discrete data, we use bar charts. Continuous data would use the following. Histogram, frequency mm -hmm. polygon, stem and leaf plot, box and whisker plot. So for example, with this data, we could present this data with the histogram with the polygon, box plot. It's okay. So box plot would be minimum score and maximum score, presenting with the lower and upper quartile, median and mean. So it would also give you the skew of the distribution, positive skew, meaning mean is greater than median, and the high score whisker is longer. Negative skew is the mean, is less than median, and the low score whisker is longer. Pie chart would be a circular diagram. So it's divided into segments, each representing a category, beside adjacent category, and the amount for each category should be proportional to the slice of the pie. So this we will further elucidate on, on later lectures as well. So this is an example of a bar graph. So height of the bar indicates frequency. Frequency is the y-axis and the categories would be the x-axis. The bar should be of equal width and no touching the other bars. So this would be a stock bar chart according to gender. 
So men would be yellow and women would be orange. So you would see a significant difference between men and women at one glance. Same way here, this is a stock bar chart. So the previous one was side by side. This is a stock bar chart and you could see the difference. So this would be other ways to present your data. So frequency polygon, histogram, and bar graph. So each would have its advantages and disadvantages. So for your activity for this afternoon, I will leave you with the following. So derive the following data for each individual in your class, namely name, nationality, gender, age in years, respiratory rate, pulse rate, height in centimeters, weight in kilograms, body mass index, favorite subject in the College of Medicine, and how many members in your nuclear family. Collate all data for the class and give each student a copy. Then submit a typewritten copy of your collated data to me and answer the following. So which of your data gathered is a qualitative variable and which of the data is quantitative discrete? Which of the data is quantitative continuous? And are all the data you collected variables or not? Explain your answer. Okay, thank you for attending this preventive medicine and community health lecture. Please submit, subscribe to my channel for more lectures on PMCH1. Thank you.